Hello and welcome to Nigan Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nigan news and all other photographic announcements that we found in Shins. Constantine here. And this is Becky. It's number 88. Wow. Double eight. That was a good year. Yeah, it was a good year. Good so, vintage. Yeah. When you play bingo and 88 comes up, what do you say? Uh, two. I think that's actually not allowed anymore. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> so let's talk about Nikon then. Can Just say back? all yeah. the eights, 88. And then, and that... No, I keep the f No, don't keep I, the f I do. <laughs> in there. Keep them out of it. All right. So let's talk about quite a bit of Nikon news that came out this week. But let's start with the previous week's news. And that was the great shortage of that nine is finally over, at least in the United States. So apparently now we've got confirmation from Adorama that they had a huge shipment as well. BNH had another huge shipment. This is a company called Paul Photos as well. So... Effectively, they are out of stock at this moment, but the lead time in the United States is something like seven to 10 days, which is pretty good in my opinion. It's very good. In Europe, we had quite a few confirmations, so do check the comments below on the previous video so people do confirm on that. In the UK, uh, we are getting shipments, but the camera is still on back order. So we're looking at probably something like between four and six weeks delay. Yeah, I'd say at the at the inside. At the outside, it could be a little bit longer, but I'm hoping that won't be the case for too much longer. We are seeing small batches of other things coming through, and we should be seeing our first delivery of 17 to 28 this week as well. That's fantastic news, Becky. I'm glad they're coming in. So speaking of United States, they started a big rebate promotion. Yeah, this is quite a common thing for the sort of latter end of the year. We see a sort of winter savings in different regions. Now, Nikon USA's rebates for October include over 40 cameras and lenses. Now, most of these savings are, why Why are they mostly likely due to the US dollar? Because that seems like because a bit of a stretch. Because US dollar is strong right now, yeah. and yen is deep in, it's basically the lowest in 20 years. Pound is deep in as well, as well as euro. Uh, so apparently, if you have dollars right now, you're doing okay. Yeah, if you if you are exactly US based, then whoop de doo. Um, one of the biggest and most notable ones is the Z5, which has a discount of between four hundred and five hundred dollars on body and body and lens combinations. We also have discounts on most of the Z cameras, obviously not the Z9. Most of the Z lenses, including. A $400 rebate on the 24 to 70 F4 if you purchase it with a Z5 or a Z9, which is mm. incredibly specific. 24 to 70 F4 is a great lens to have with your Z9. It's just an interesting combination, but I'm glad that they are offering these for sure. And uh, let's see what happens to the European and UK region. I'm sure we'll be hearing something soon. It's usually around November time that we start well, to see sure. our savings. And since those are October rebates, and October is almost finished, so hopefully we will see November rebates or cashback as we call it here. What is it in Welsh? Uh, no, ah, that, means, we go. <laughs> that means please. <laughs> We call it instant save over here. It's instant save usually. That's right. Because they abolished cash back a few years back when it just drove everyone up the wall trying to do the cash Well, that's back true. Thing. And I think the rebates, normally it's instant rebates in the United States, but who knows, maybe it's not in this case. No, we, yeah. But speaking of promotions, we hopefully will see a winter promotion or Christmas promotion, what they call it, starting very soon. So no information of it as of yet, but I'm sure as soon as November kicks in, which is next week, we will probably hear something. Exactly. Watch this space. All right. Now let's move on to firmware updates. We had a firmware updates for Z50 and your favorite cameras, Z6 and Z7, with some autofocus improvements. Golly, golly, gosh. So on the Z50, we've got save focus position and recall focus position have been added to the roles that can be assigned using custom setting F2. As of October, these options were supported with the following lenses, and it's all the long lenses, basically. 70 to 200, 100 to 400, 2 400 primes, and the 800 prime. Now, behavior of autofocus during memory recall has been improved to ensure that the focus position will not change in any focus mode, even if the shutter release button is pressed halfway while focus recall is in progress. The same changes also apply to Z6 and Z7 cameras. Now, 
From here, they will differ slightly. Yeah, so with the Z50, we've got during remote photography with the MLL7, which is a very handy little piece of kit, I must say. The camera will now focus with every shot taken with AFC selected for the focus mode, if release is chosen, rather than focus in your custom settings menu. And they've also fixed an issue that sometimes resulted in the settings selected for custom settings F2 not performing as expected in user setting mode. So that's your U1, U2 in the case of the Z50. All right, now let's move on to Z6 and Z7, a film where they fixed the following issues. The settings selected for flash control, wireless flash options in the photo shooting menu would sometimes change from optical radio AV AWL to optical AWL when SB500 flash unit was used with wireless remote controller. Very specific, okay, very specific. niche, but I'm glad they fixed it. Obviously, we've said it many, many times, we love that you can support in all the cameras and obviously Z6 and Z7 are the cameras that started the whole Z generation. So we obviously can't ignore those people in the corner with their Z6 II and Z7 Mark II cameras looking angrily at Nikon and us. And hopefully something will come out this year to please them. I'm sincerely hoping so. I have to say that the Z6 II and Z7 II must be perfect in Nikon's estimations if they haven't produced a firmware update. That's true. That's true. I mean, they're great cameras. As long as you pretend the Z9 doesn't exist, they are the best cameras in the world. Now, we also have an update to do with SnapBridge. Nikon have discovered an issue with iOS 16.0.2 and SnapBridge. Z9 raw images can't be deleted in the SnapBridge image gallery. And if multiple raw images are brought over on connection, Apple Photos will terminate when attempting to display them. So... That doesn't yet have a fix, but is something that they have discovered and will no doubt be working on with an app update very, very soon. If you're a Z9 and SnapBridge user, please watch this space. It will come out around the same time as Z6 2 and Z7 Mark II film where we'll be out. Now, let's move on some Adobe and Nikon news. Adobe had the Adobe Max virtual conference last week where they announced a lot of huge updates for their Adobe suite, including Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere. Now, Nikon and Adobe announced a partnership which adds the provenance and content authenticity at the point of capture for Nikon Z9 camera. Wow. What that means is basically it tells that this image is authentic and not butchered by someone with Photoshop in hands. I don't really understand how that would work, but okay. So I won't ask. <laughs> they said, today marks an exciting milestone in our mission as we announce partnerships with industry-leading camera manufacturers Leica and Nikon to implement provenance technology into two exhibiting cameras, Leica's iconic M11 rangefinder and Nikon's industry-leading mirrorless Z9, bringing provenance and authenticity to digital images at the point of capture. Both partnerships will advance the CAI content authenticity initiative efforts of empowering millions of photographers everywhere to attach provenance to their image at the point of capture, creating a chain of authenticity from camera to cloud. It's a critical step in bolstering trust to combat the pervasive issues of plagiarism, as well as misinformation and disinformation. So in sort of layman's terms, it sounds like the issue would be if you took an image and then someone butchered it, as you say, and then says, this is a genuine image, and it's not. Absolutely. To add to this, in the world of fake news... Adobe, Nikon, and Leica are fighting for you and photojournalism in general. There you go. Uh, speaking of which, Nikon will have the Nikon Z9 with that feature enabled presented at Adobe Max, which obviously they had already. So they said that they will implement Z9. We don't know if it's going to be free with a few firmware or is it going to be some sort of paid firmware or is it going to be a custom firmware designed for, let's say, big photo, so. yeah, photojournalists or agencies, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows? Well, let's see and wait. And obviously, we saw in the past that Sony is developing some sort of a blockchain solution for that. Mm. Adobe, Nikon, are like a partner together to introduce something like this. But we assume in a world of digital where things can get changed really quickly, it's not the same as having physical negative in your hands. Mm. You know, So I think it's worth having that feature. I guess it doesn't really affect us as, let's say, general hobbyist enthusiasts, but for pros who it becomes important, I think it is an essential thing to have. Yes. Now, speaking of Z9, we've mentioned last week that T Coro released the software development kit uh, for the development. So T Coro is the company who is behind 
Nikon Z9 video RAW as well as high efficiency RAW. And based on this news, on one software came out last week with support of Z9, and now Capture One as well has high efficiency RAW support. This is very good news. Uh, now we have all the major players support this. So finally, it took a year for companies to get there, but I'm glad it's finally there. And for you who are trying to save space and shoot a lower frames with Z9, this is definitely going to be a nice feature to have. Speaking of Capture One, in Germany, apparently there's a deal where you buy a Nikon Z mirrorless camera, you'll get a Capture One for free, as well as the Capture One 2023, which is going to come out next month, so you'll get a free update to that. Absolutely brilliant. I very much like that incentive. Next up, cut in half Nikon S rangefinder lenses have sold on Yahoo auctions in Japan for 343,000 yen. Do you think it was a half price? No. <laughs> now, you'll see the images here of the lenses. These were usually kind of display models used to show the inside of the lenses. Um, I don't know what the history is behind these specific ones that were sold for that much, but we do have a rather special selection of our own cut-in-half things. Okay, with 343,000 yen, it's only 2,000 pounds. Now, would you like a D850 cut-in-half for 2,000 pounds? Yeah, I'd let it go for 2,000 pounds, yeah? I think. Or Z6 or Z7. It doesn't have a logo. Cut in half. It's what I do on my weekends, basically. You know, It's just, it's just cut <laughs> my little arts and crafts hobby, you know. I mean, the thing is that the Z... 6 and Z7 look identical on the outside. So apart from looking at the number, we will never know which one this is. I wonder if you put in a battery if it would work. No, you can't turn the on-off switch. Anyway, moving swiftly on from that silliness. All right, the next one's quite an interesting one, actually. The website, which is called Skies and Scopes, who specializes in astrophotography, analyzed 685 images shortlisted for astronomy photographer of the year competition in the last five years and hear what they've learned in camera edition. Well, number one is that the Sony A7 Mark III is the most successfully used DSLR or mirrorless camera in the competition in 2022. However, Nikon takes greater share. If we look at the mirrorless cameras used just in 2022, Sony does still have the vast majority, but Nikon is taking a greater share of the market with photographers increasingly using mirrorless Z6 or Z6 II and Z7 or Z7 II models. You can see the chart for mirrorless only here. Yeah, so we got 73% with Sony and then Nikon at 21%, 3% of Canon and Panasonic. Obviously, those are shortlisted images. Mm. It doesn't represent the buying pattern, but it just represents what photographers use for astrophotography nowadays. Now, you know, you're looking at this and it's just a mirrorless. If you add DSLR into the mix, Nikon has had the top spot for most used cameras in the last three years running. This reflects the older DSLRs like D750, D850, D810 cameras, which are very popular with astrophotographers. And these have been complemented by popularity of mirrorless cameras such as Z6, Z7, and their Mark II version. So if you look at the chart, you can see that actually Nikon is on top for three years with uh, 40% in 2022. 40, 39, 42%. Yeah. And you can see that the Canon cameras were previously more popular, but that's yeah. dramatically changed. Well, the pattern we see here with Canon is apparently the EOS R6 was the popular camera. Mm. And the problem is when people start to upgrade to mirrorless offerings, mm. it seems that the people are going away from Canon and either switching to Nikon and Sony. So that's the thing, number one. This is very interesting for us because Nikon and Canon are in a very similar position coming to mirrorless market. They came in late. They started around the same time, introducing their offerings, et cetera, et cetera. And current strategy of Nikon seems to be winning, especially with introducing third-party lenses into the system while Canon is obviously doing the opposite. Now, another point to take away from here is that Sony is actually taking a lead and will probably take a lead next year. And that's to do with, obviously, people switching from DSLR to mirrorless. Sony was a champion of mirrorless. Mm. They started probably one of the first cameras who started with mirrorless cameras. And because of that, they have a lot more offerings, a lot more cameras on the market, a lot more generations of the cameras on the market as well. That's right. And because of that as well, when people start to upgrade, especially Canon people, let's say, they would potentially switch to Sony cameras. So we expect Sony to lead this way in the future, the more mirrors come into the mix. But it's important, I think, for Nikon to push for that strategy and hopefully try to compete at least with Sony for it's share.
That's right. Now, in 2022, for the first time, mirrorless cameras became more commonly used than DSLRs in the competition. Mirrorless cameras were used in 52% of DSLR mirrorless images versus 48% of DSLRs. In 2018, this was 83% DSLRs and 17% mirrorless. So that just kind of goes to show the way that people are moving. Yeah, transition from DSLR to mirrorless systems. Speaking of competitions, Nikon Photo Contest 2023 is calling for entries. Yep, Nikon have announced that the entries for their Nikon Photo Contest will be accepted from 27th of October, which is Thursday, yes, mm -hmm. until February the 13th, 2023. The Photo Contest is the 39th contest to be held since its introduction, and it will be comprised of a photo competition, a short film competition. The photo competition will offer a single photo category and a photo story category, portfolio, if you will. And the short film competition will offer a short film category, obviously, and a super short film category. The theme of the photo competition is beloved, for which they are looking for photos that express individual priorities from a variety of perspectives. The theme for the short film competition is next steps. Entries in this competition should express further growth and future evolution. An announcement of the winners is scheduled for July 2023 and is open to all professional and amateur photographers regardless of age, gender or nationality. So if you're interested this Thursday, you can submit your images. Now let's move on to third party news. The first one up, Tikina has no plans to make mirrorless lenses for Nikon Z mount. They apparently confirmed with Nikon rumors, just call them up and say, we're not planning and hang up, um, which is okay. I would say it for me personally, it's I'm fine happy. with us. Exactly. I'm happy that Tamron is there already. I would like Sigma to get in. I think those are the two, the big plays mm -hmm. in terms of lenses. So, you know, obviously we have Voigtland in the mix, which is nice. Obviously, Casino and Zeiss, who knows, maybe they will get into that space as well. Mm. If Takina doesn't want it, that's absolutely fine. I think the more companies join the Z revolution, Takina may change their minds. All right, next up, Alec Griffin published a few more tests of the latest CF Express cards performing on Nikon cameras. Obviously, a lot of brand new CF Express cards are coming out every day now from the cheapest and slowest uh, writing speeds to the cutting edge fastest in the world with reading and writing speeds. So obviously, it's good to have an updated list, especially if you're buying a camera like Z9 and who knows, potentially a new Z camera with a fast reading and writing speeds in the future. So the list has been updated. Go to that link and check it out. Let's move on to reviews. We have a Z30 review by DP Review. They've uh, finally decided to give it a little bash. They said what they like is the fact that it's compact, excellent ergonomics and menu system, which is all completely the same as any other Nikon. Mm -hmm. uh, clean 4K 30p video, fast AF performance up close, good built-in stereo microphone with a 3.5mm jack for external mics and a versatile kit lens. So there's some, some nice pros there. Now, what didn't they like? They didn't like the headphone jack. The fact um, there isn't one. There isn't one. So say we don't like headphone jack because it's not there. Uh, there's no sensibilization, which is unfortunately is common to all DXZ cameras and hopefully the new generation will improve on that. That's right. Then they talk about limited lens choice and that they look at the DX range. Obviously, when we look personally at the Z system, we also include full frame lenses, yeah. but I understand that we are missing the wide angle side of things and that's where the 12 to 28 lens should address hopefully soon. And they also talked about no visual way to monitor audio in a selfie mode. I can't remember if we spotted that when we used it, but uh, it is a little bit frustrating if you can't see if you're clipping or not when you're selfieing. That's true. The selfieing is being the priority for a lot of YouTubers nowadays, not us. We're a little bit old school. We like to film each other, each other <laughs> not ourselves. So the good news is there's a mic jack on Z30. So you can put a wireless mic or some sort of shotgun mic, which you can attach on the hot shoe of the camera. Now, not being able to monitor your audio is, I agree, it's, it's a bit of a con, but at the same time, 
I would say this camera is aimed at kind of a selfie, you know, one man band videographers. You, you probably don't really have time to monitor all that, but I think it would be worth having it to make it a full fledged video camera. Yeah. It's a shame, but you can pass through that in my opinion. That's right. It's definitely not the end of the world. And as you say, for the use case that it's been created for, I don't think it's a deal breaker necessarily. Now, DP Review have compared it to the Sony offering. We're not going to go through all of the different bits and pieces that they brought up, but it is an interesting review. So do go and check it out. We're going to include the link in the description box and in the podcast notes for you. Yeah. What they essentially say, the $800 price favors the Z30 unless you're looking for more lens options. So effectively, they're talking that Sony system has more DX offerings. And I hope Nikon will improve on that in the future. I think so. Shall we move on to our We Can Read and Watch section? Yes, this one comes from Becky, and it is a keeper. It is. This story originally came from the British Photographic Historical Society. It is quite a beautiful look into history. It's also fascinating to see how they worked, you know, side by side. The, the, the factory team is an all-women team, actually. That's There's true. Very few blokes in there, I must say. But uh, it is a lovely little sneak peek. They're fully digitized and cleaned up images so you can see that they, obviously some of the photos had quite a bit of wear over the years and someone has painstakingly gone through and cleaned them up for your viewing pleasure. So enjoy. Absolutely. If you would like to enjoy the fashion and hairstyles of the day, do hit the link below. Yeah, I wondered, you know, that cropped hairstyle, do you think that'll ever come back in fashion? <laughs> Well, the fashion is cyclical, it therefore is. it's coming tomorrow. Now, it's published on Google Arts and Culture, and as a man of culture myself, I approve this message. Great. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe on YouTube. We'd hugely appreciate it. And give us a follow, a rating, maybe even a review on the podcast platforms. That would be great. Yeah, we are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Unlimited Music of the World. And we also are on social medias such as Instagram. And Becky is... I'm at Rebecca underscore Denazi. The shop is at Nikon and Grace. And I'm M. Constantine Kochkin. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.